I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and a Negro in So how do you steal a dream? Well, ask an expert, Carl Rove. In certain parts of America today, we are in some parts of the country, I'm afraid to say, beginning to look like we have elections like those run in countries where the guys in charge are, you know, colonels in mirrored sunglasses. He wasn't complaining. He was boasting. Rove had a plan to undermine the Voting Rights Act of 1965. That's the law that Martin Luther King dreamed of. My name's Pallast, Greg Pallast. I'm an investigative reporter, and I've been covering the election's theft beat for 14 years. I don't think I'm done with this interview. Wait, well, let me just, ask, let me just show you the contract, if I could. Mr. Roberts, wait. It says here, right in the contract, that the verification is supposed to be done by DBT, that you paid them $4 million. Don't you, is, it could look to other people that you paid $4 million to purchase this election for the Republican Party, Mr. Roberts? with my investigations partner, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. If you target black or minority voters, it's illegal under the Voting Rights Act of 1965 specifically. I'm talking to you right now about a matter of some real urgency. Right now, the United States Supreme Court is deciding on a suit brought by the state of Alabama. Alabama with its vicious racist. Thanks, Martin. Alabama and the former Confederate states have sued to get out of the requirement that before they change any voting procedures, they get approval from the U.S. Department of Justice. Now, why do these states need to pre-clear their new procedures? Klansmen from Mississippi! Mississippi! The first voting rights law, the 15th Amendment to the Constitution, passed in 1870, gave Americans of all colors the right to vote. But states like Alabama and Florida used all kinds of tricks to stop black people from voting. Lynchings, voter roll purges, fake literacy tests, all used to prevent citizens of color from voting, known as Jim Crow laws. Today, Jim Crow is very much alive, except he's changed his white sheets for spreadsheets. This is Willie Steen, a Gulf War veteran. Wrong person. I never been arrested in my life, you know. Was in the military for four years. Got out of the military, been in the medical field ever since. Republican Secretary of State Catherine Harris tagged Willie Steen a criminal, a felon, and took away his vote. It's pretty screwed up how they did me, but um, what can I say? Did removing thousands of innocent black men from the voter rolls Make any difference? I hereby declare Governor George W. Bush the winner of Florida's 25 electoral votes for the President of the United States. The use of the old Jim Crow tactics continues. And why? It's not because of the color of the voter's skin. It's because of the color of the voter's ballot. Just listen to Carl Rove. If black voters share the turnout drops just one point in North Carolina, Mr. Obama's 2008 winning margin there is wiped out two and a half times over. You can steal an election in nine easy ways. The president has mentioned one of them. A North Miami woman named Desaline Victor. When Desaline arrived at her polling place, she was told the wait to vote might be six hours. Desaline is 102 years old. Excuse me, Mr. President, uh, Mrs. Victor, wasn't forced to wait in line because she's elderly. She was forced to wait in line because she's black. There are eight other ways to steal an election. And Florida's gone back to a Catherine Crow favorite, voter roll purges. In 2012, the Republican governor of Florida claimed he had found illegal alien voters on the voter rolls, 180,000 of them that needed to be purged. But when he was challenged by the Justice Department, the 180,000 dropped to 
Almost 100 individuals that are registered to vote that are non-U.S. citizens. And then found 86 that are registered to vote that were non-citizens. A list of ne'er-do-wells. I've seen this movie before. And I have here a list of the names of 207 persons who are known by the Secretary of Defense as being members of the Communist Party. We try to contact the governor of Florida, but his office sent us this message. And it said that they're waiting for this Supreme Court decision. If it goes their way, they can remove anyone they want. They certainly don't have to answer our questions. They said, we intend to remove non-citizens from Florida voter rolls and anticipate doing so with plenty of time to prepare for the next general election. I bet they will. If it wasn't for the Voting Rights Act, they could have removed over 100,000 Americans, all of them innocent. It's interesting to note that on the list of thousands they would remove from the voter rolls, your chance of being there is four times greater if you're Hispanic than if you're white. Voting, if you're not an American citizen in a U.S. election, is a felony crime. You go to jail, then you get deported. So how many illegal aliens did the Republicans nab out of their list of 180,000? They arrested one. He was a citizen of Austria and Canada. Southern states moan that they've been picked on because the Voting Rights Act preclearance provisions apply only to 16 states. Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and the old Dixie state of New York. When I talk with you. Welcome to the Empire State. Home with World Trade. Alaska. You. you. And Arizona. I flew to Arizona to find those swarms of illegal voters that the state had captured and imprisoned. And this is Tent City, Arizona, an overflow jail created by Republicans who dream of filling its tents with illegal aliens who've waited across the Rio Grande to steal the election for the Democrats. But we couldn't find any. I'm a registered voter. I just have a misdemeanor. Then we flew on to Surf City, to California, another pre-clearance state, where my surfing teacher, Donna Fry, surfer chick. And get your balance that way. Don't Seriously. balance. Don't try and balance. Donna won a race for mayor of San Diego, but she was denied office because of a bunch of bubbles. Hispanic and elderly voters were confused by an English language ballot that had a little trick in it. We've been invited into the home of voters whose votes didn't count. Yeah. Did not fill in the bubble. So why don't you fill in the bubble? Because I didn't know when you put, when you fill in the name that you had to put a bubble in. Mom, it said you had to put in the fill in the bubble. I'm sorry. Putting you on. Your sorry. sister and I did not draw you, black <laughs> circles. She's an ex school teacher. She know how to fill in a bubble. I'm an ex school teacher. And she's a lawyer. That's we did you know. not. Do it. Yeah, and I, I'm a high school dropout. And I'm a high school dropout, and I filled in the so, bubble. Wait, but. Less than half of the nation's Latino citizens are registered to vote but it's not for lack of trying. For years, Chicano voters have conducted massive registration drives, signing up hundreds of thousands of Latino voters in California. But in 2006, for example, the Republican Secretary of State rejected 42% of those registrations because they had unusual names like Garcia Marquez. Unusual, that is, for Republicans. Because of this long history of Jose Crow tactics, back in 1982, this man signed a massive extension of the pre-clearance rules of the Voting Rights Act to include even his own state of California. This was right after Reagan's famous, I had a nap speech. This past election, we saw long lines of black people in the pre-clearance state of Florida. But I also saw them in the no-clearance state of Ohio. 
Why are you waiting in this line? Well, I have to exercise my right to vote. So if I have to stand in line to do it, then I'm going to do that. Well, I also went to the white polling stations to check out the lines there. We're in the suburbs of Toledo, Ohio. We're in line for voting on Election Day 2012. Well, actually, there's no line. or waited in line for a very long time. By the way, we have to fix that. Wow, imagine if that guy were president. He could do something to fix that. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington, where Dr. King told us that he had dreamed that all Americans, whether in Mississippi or Alabama or Florida, could vote regardless of their color. America, we're still dreaming. Maybe it's time to wake up. No more Jim Crow lines. No more Jose Crow ballots. How do we get our dream back? Martin Luther King told us that we must go back. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama, go back to South Carolina, go back to Georgia, go back to Louisiana, go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities. Knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. This situation can be changed by you when you join Dr. Charles Steele Jr., the man who succeeded Martin Luther King as president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. You can join the march by signing this petition here. First, tell the Supreme Court it must not destroy Dr. King's Dream Act. Second, tell Congress all Americans deserve the protection of Justice Department review, whether in Old Dixie in Alabama and Florida or in New Dixie, Arizona and Ohio. Sign it and add your name, along with Dr. Bernard Lafayette Jr., he was one of the original Freedom Riders. He was beaten, arrested, and beaten again, and he's still singing. Buses are a-coming, buses are a-coming, buses are a-coming, oh yes. We say to the jailers, better get you ready, oh yes. The jailers say, all right, shut up all that singing and hollering in here. You want information on all the tricks that they use to steal your vote and how you can steal it back. Well, go to www.gregpalast.com and get a copy of Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, How to Steal an Election in Nine Easy Steps, with chapters by Bobby Kennedy and cartoons by Ted Rawl, www.gregpalast.com. And from Florida to Ohio, Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. This fact check is brought to you by the not-for-profit, nonpartisan Palest Investigative Fund. This is Greg Palest, and I approve this message, and I have a dream that you will sign this petition. Buzzes are a common. Oh, yes. Thank you. Wow.